Hello there, it's me again. <laughs> this time I want to read an excerpt from Divine Mercy in a Woman's Life Milestones Along the Way. Recently I spoke to you about tears, tears being kind of a prayer even, not just an emotion. And so I read about that in my book and it just happens that this particular excerpt I want to read has something about tears, but that's not the main reason why I want to share it. You'll see when I get to that part that we're not the only people who cry. So you'll see. This is from chapter 23 on motherhood. And it's um, the subtitle is Mother Mary's Loving Prayers. Okay, so here we go. What would we do without a loving mother's prayers? Thank God for Mother Mary. She prays for us and guides us to pray like her, to stand beside our children, to pray with holy tears for their salvation. I'll stop right there for a second. See, tears can be holy. And when we, we cry, we're concerned, we're you know, giving it to our Lord, everything, all of those concerns, all of those tears. When we pray, if our children veer off the path or someone else's child or our grandchildren, whoever it may be, you know, women pray from their hearts and, and sometimes tears are shed and our Lord sees those tears. He hears the cries from our hearts. So back to this excerpt, if I could find my spot. Yes, to stand beside our children, to pray with holy tears for their salvation. Mothering children is not just about taking care of their physical and emotional needs. It's about prayerfully es escorting them to heaven. When Our Lady of Fatima appeared to the three shepherd children, Lucia de Santos and Francisco and Jacinta Marto, she was not all smiles. She was indeed filled with love, but her demeanor was that of utter concern for the salvation of the world. Sister Lucia made note of this in her memoirs. During at least one of the apparitions, Our Lady had tears on her face. Another time, she appeared with her heart pierced with thorns. In October 1917, she appeared as Our Lady of Dolors. Mother Mary is always concerned for the salvation of the world, for the salvation of our souls. Sister Lucia's younger cousins, Francisco and Jacinta, went home to heaven at early ages. Sister Lucia was left behind to propagate the message of Our Lady of Fatima. She was a professed nun in two congregations. First, she entered the Dorotheans and then, with her superior's permission, became a Carmelite nun. At one point through correspondence between Sister Lucia and a cardinal, something quite incredible about the family and the future of the family was revealed. In 1980, St. John Paul II appointed Cardinal Carlo Caffera, the Archbishop of Bologna, to plan and establish the Pontifical Institute for Studies on Marriage and Family. The Cardinal wrote to Sister Lucia through her bishop to ask her for her prayers, and he received an unexpected letter from the Fatima visionary. In her letter, Sister Lucia gave both a warning and a consolation. She told the Cardinal that the final battle between the Lord and the reign of Satan will be about marriage and the family. Don't be afraid, she added, because anyone who works for the sanctity of marriage and the family will always be fought and opposed in every way, because this is the decisive issue. Sister Lucia concluded, however, Our Lady has already crushed its head. We are assured through Sister Lucia's words about the intrinsic value and the sanctity of the human family. The devil hates the family and seeks to destroy that which God has created. This should not make us tremble in our boots, but instead it should give us all the more reason to be on our guard 
so as to be ready to earnestly protect human life and the family, the domestic church. Let us not be afraid, but remember Sister Lucia's assurance. Our Lady has already crushed its head. Let us mothers gain strength and courage from our faith. So, some strong words here to ponder in our hearts today. That's a a mouthful, right? So much there uh, about the, the need to pray, pray for the salvation of our family, our loved ones, pray for the world, pray for those people who have no one to pray for them. That's what Our Lady of Fatima asked for. She asked for penance and the daily rosary and the five for Saturday devotion. She asked everyone to turn away from sin and to convert their hearts, you know, with God's grace. So there's a lot for us to do as a Christian. But Jesus said, in order to be his disciple, we need to deny ourselves, pick up our cross and follow him. He never said it would be easy, but he gives us so much love and guidance and grace, everything that we can possibly need on this journey through life, right? It might be a crooked path sometimes. It was for me, that's for sure. But keep praying for the graces. Keep turning to God and to our Blessed Mother. You know, we really need to cling to Jesus and cling to Mary, as Mother Teresa would say. So I hope I've given you something to think about and to pray about. But I think we should uh, leave it there for right now. And I'll be back. (laughs) Don't worry. By the grace of God, Lord willing, of course. So I hope you stay well. I hope you stay very prayerful. And until we see one another again, God bless you. Bye-bye now.